Welcome back to Hila Live. Now, of course, we are getting still the reaction, of course, to uh, cabinet deciding to pull out its diplomats from Israel. But we're also going to touch on the pro-Palestine pickets that took place outside the conference venue at the Agoa summit. One of those organizations was, of course, SAFTU. I'd like to welcome its spokesperson, Trevor Shaku. Mr. Shaku, thank you so much for joining us here on Hila Live. Thank you for having us. It's an absolute pleasure. Mr. Shaku, I first want to get your uh, reaction to, of course, the decision made by government early today to uh, recall uh, the diplomats uh, from Israel. Well, SAFTU welcomes the decision uh, that we have to withdraw all the diplomats from Israel. But secondly, we want to express dissatisfaction with that decision because our longstanding demand has been that they must expel the Israeli ambassador mm. and close the embassy of Israel here at home. So the, recall, the recalling of the diplomats is not enough, and in our view, has to be complemented by firstly withdrawing, uh, or rather closing the embassy and expelling the ambassador. Of course, we have extra other demands, which include the fact that we are organizing in a company called Loba, which is a dairy company, and in 2019, a, an Israeli company called uh, Milko CBC, Central Bottling Company, which has some of its operation in the occupied uh, Palestinian territories, acquired Clover, and after that acquisition, went on to retrench over 2,700 of our workers at that particular company, relocating its plants for manufacturing. And as a result, that had a ripple negative effect on the farmers in the inlands where these particular factories were relocated. So one of the standing demand was to have this government expropriate, if not to expel, mm. the foreign investments, foreign direct investments from Israel. Because in our view, the time for speaking has come to an end. Mm. And what has to be done is to show by concrete steps that we are indeed with the people of Palestine who have been suffering the oppressive regime that has systemically and brutally murdered them for over 75 years now, that that particular show of solidarity has to be concrete. And the concrete steps, in our view, would amount to expelling the, embassy, the, the ambassador, closing the embassy, and expropriating all foreign direct investments which come from Israel if they fear any punitive measures from the international trade organizations, then they can expel such particular foreign direct investment. Mr. Shaku, uh, touching on the Israeli ambassador, a cabinet has now left it uh, to Turco to, of course, make that eventual decision. We saw earlier on Chad being one of those countries, actually the first African country, but stand to be corrected, to have expelled its ambassador. Uh, do you feel South Africa has it? Do you feel Durko has it in them to go ahead and make that decision? Look, the, what they have shown is cowardice for over this period. Because, you see, what has happened since October is not the first time Israel goes on a killing spree. This is systemic, as I've said. And therefore, we think that the ambassador should have been expelled a long time ago. So there's still some form of cowardice. That's why they resort to pulling their diplomats instead of decisively implementing the expulsion of the ambassador and closing the embassy itself. Mr. Shaku, let's turn, obviously, to, to what happened at Agoa. Uh, you were part of the pro-Palestine pickets, along with PDS and various other organizations. So the, de the deal has been renewed for these African countries to be part of Agoa. On one side, government would say this is necessary to keep the economy going. But I want to get the side of, of course, uh, the pro-Palestine perspective of this, especially that of SAFTU. Is there a disappointment that uh, this summit, uh, this deal has been renewed and South Africa will remain part of AGOA? So our disappointment lies in the fact that at the current moment, U.S. is the number one sponsor of Israel. In other words, it is the number one sponsor of the genocide and the ethnic cleansing that is taking place in Palestine. And our objection was we cannot dine and wine and shake hands with the sponsors and the people who are funding the genocidal campaign of our people in Palestine. 
And so uh, in, in, that, that is the first and primary criticism we had. The second one is that in the long term, of course, relations between ourselves as a country with America uh, can take place. But this is a time when we cannot compromise because these people, whenever they take public platforms, Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, in America, uh, the Secretary of Foreign Affairs in America, the President, every of those diplomats and politicians in America, whenever they take public platform, they express solidarity with Israel. And not only are they doing that, like I said, they are also showing that in concrete terms by providing military support. On Friday, if not Thursday, they approved a budget of 14.5 billion US dollars in support to the military campaign that is taking place currently in Gaza, which has led to the bombardment and the destruction of the houses of people, the destruction of the institutions that offer public service such as hospitals, but moreover that, the killing of children, young people, old and even males and women. So the indiscriminate killing of these people, in our view, warrants the position that SAFTU has adopted. And that is to say, at this current moment, we should have boycotted this AGOA as a country to show and register that we are against the support that the United States government is giving to the Israeli Zionist regime. Mr. Shaku, um, is South Africa too reliant on AGOA? I, I had an interview with another gentleman uh, before this interview, and it seems as if because of the, the, uh, the big trade agreements that were signed, and of course the money that's involved in the trillions, South Africa has a obligation to be part of AGOA. Uh, what is Saftu's view on that? Is South Africa too reliant on AGOA? Is, is maybe African nations not doing enough internally as a continent to say, we don't really need America. We can find a way to work on our own and grow the economy from a continental perspective. Indeed, um, we, we lean towards a view that says, well, at the current moment, even the goods that are traded through Agoa with America, I think they constitute only 20%. So it's not too much insofar as that relation is concerned. There's 80% of trade relations that take place between ourselves and America and are not facilitated through Agoa. The point, however, that we must make is that one of the areas of trade which is facilitated through Agoa is in the manufacturing of food and the, 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 the export and import of food. And the problems which we've had is that the removal of the import duties that are facilitated through Agoa, especially in the import of chicken, ch uh, bone chicken, mm. which is in, uh, imported from uh, America, has actually had a dire impact on the poultry industry in our country. And in fact, there was a murmuring amongst the people who are in the poultry industry to talk about having to boycott Agoa at a particular point. Mm. Because as the records show, last year, we imported and consumed 49, or rather the 49% of the chicken we consumed, bone chicken that we consumed in our country, was, export, was imported from America. And because they use efficient and newer technologies, they are able to lower the necessary labor time that it takes to produce those chickens. And as a result, they lower the prices of the chickens as they sell them to consumers. And that on its own undercuts the poultry industry in our country and puts the jobs in, 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 uh, uh, in trouble. Because what happens is that the local industry of poultry begins to suffer, the trench workers, and, and, and with that, uh, the many other problems, of course, fall. So we, 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 we sympathize, and our workers, of course, have mandated us for a long time now. That is the reason why our organization, our affiliate, the Food and Allied Workers mm -hmm. Union of South Africa, would have supported the enactment of the tariffs which were imposed in July and August. But the, because of Agoa, the problems is that those particular percentage points which were added to the tariffs were not applicable to the United States because of the trade facilitation by Agoa itself. So the quotas apply, and as a result, these people continue to get the best deals, and as a result, they're undercutting the industry. By undercutting the industry, as I've said, it leads 
to the destruction of the industry, which leads to retrenchments. So we have our reservations insofar as that relation has on our economy and on the jobs of our own members. One final question, Mr. Shaku. The ruling party, the ANC, of course, uh, they voice their uh, support for Palestine. And there was an open letter written to President Cyril Ramaphosa ahead of the Agawa summit to completely distance South Africa away from uh, Agawa because of America's support for Israel. Um, it, it, the, 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 the deal has now extended beyond 2025. And there's no way President Cyril Ramaphosa is just going to go ahead and cut it, is there? Mm -hmm. But, but I mean, Saftu, like yourself, organizations like yourself and many others who want it to happen immediately, the cutting of ties from Agoa. Do you potentially see that happening? Should there be, of course, a worldwide campaign, and I mean this from a governmental and a diplomatic point of view against Israel, to, of course, have South Africa distance itself from Agoa? I do not see them making any concessions. If anything, in their cabinet statement released earlier today, they are saying that they welcome the extension of the AGOA uh, by 10 years, if not mistaken. And therefore, uh, they see this relation as bearing positive fruits for the economies of our own continent. Of course, as I've said earlier, there are problems. And one point I, would not have, I, I may have missed in my criticism of Agoa earlier, is the fact that what happens here is that you have a continent that has a lot of population. Mm. The population growth is higher. And in economics, population means market. Mm. Now, in that context, I really do not understand why there is no proper coordination amongst African countries to be able to coordinate amongst themselves. They have the market. Of course, they may need to get technologies from outside. But we have friendlier relations with other countries other than the US, which has wreaked havoc on this continent, wreaked havoc not only in the colonial era, but even in the post-colonial era, where we've seen them instigating coups in North Africa, especially in Libya, where we see them continuing through protection of their imperialist interests in the middle of Africa, CAR, Congo, and all of that, we see that their interests have actually uh, been and continue to be imperialist interests and not necessarily uh, interested in the developmental agenda of this continent. And therefore, our, it is the short-sightedness on the part of the leaders of African countries to continue to be over-reliant on these companies, so on these countries, even when we've got the potential and the possibility to be able to expand and trade amongst ourselves without having to get any uh, uh, assistance or thinking that we're getting any favors mm. from the United States be, uh, and, and other imperialist countries like your France and them. Because generally, what we do have is the potential to be able to grow our economies as a continent. We've got the mineral resources. We've got the bigger population, just like other uh, uh, Asian countries. Uh, and, and that on its own in economic terms means broader markets and therefore we've got to be able to invest in uplifting the living standards of our people so that they can actively participate in the economy as consumers and therefore expand the market itself. And that the economy, there they, they, they should be a, a, a proper expansion of the economic relations between our countries and that will assist us in ensuring that we do not over rely on some of these countries. At this current moment, there, is, there seems to be over-reliance to these countries because we are told, no, South Africa uh, has America as the second, if not the third, um, a trade partner. And therefore, if you were to draw out uh, South Africa in its relation with America, it would, of course, concretely have dire impact on the economy. But over time, this facilitation of new relations can happen, and over time, we will find ourselves not over -reliant on the imperialist countries whose interest is nothing but to plunder the resources of our continent and reap profits out of that. Mr. Shaku, thank you so much for joining us here on Hilal Live. Much appreciated. Thank you very much, my brother. That's uh, Trevor Shaku, a uh, SAFTU national spokesperson. After the break, I'll have your latest in news. Do stay tuned to Hilal Live.